handle my take care of this bird man shit, you know what I mean? Wait, what's going on? Hold on, whoa. Uh -oh. No, hold on, just bust. What's going on? The drama hour. What's going on, Juvie? What's going on? Homie, homie false, homie false claim in my hood, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, he's, it's like, first of all, you, 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 you try to play me with the money. Okay, that was good. I took you to court. I played it your way. I got, I beat you in court. I got my own deal now. Now all of a sudden, you want to diminish my character and, and then false claim my hood and disrespect my hood. You know what I mean? So now it's like, okay, dog, we ain't even got to shoot out. You know what I mean? We ain't got to pull the guns out or nothing. But you know, you know I'm going to see you, so you might as well stop ducking me and just come off from under the rock and fight me. Tell them big old 6 9 security guards. I, I, you don't see me. You don't see me a few inches. You yeah, don't catch me with no security right, guards, homie. Talk, I'm thugging. Yo. I'm up top, up bottom, west coast. I'm everywhere. I knew everybody on every terrain, homie. That's the reason why you don't come out. But you already know I'm going to see you. So you might as well just come from under that rock and take these five with me. Because I'm going to do it to you. But you already know I'm going to see you. So you might as well just come from under that rock and take these five with me. Because I'm going to do it to you. You already know. Yeah, Yo, 1-800-223-9797, yeah. wants a fair one, and I respect yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, Charlamagne the guy, we are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building today. Juve! Juvenile! What's up, <laughs> what up, sir? What it do, what it do? What's up, my brother? Cooling, man, cooling. Now, now the streets want to know. The streets? Yeah, the why, streets. why did Juve sign back the cash money? After the uh, financial problems. And did you, you really sign back? I did. I okay. did. Okay. But after we all the financial out. problems y'all had back in the day. We worked it out. We worked it out, that man. That means they and cut the check. They cut the check. That's why Wayne couldn't get paid. All the money was the Juvie. All the money was the Juvie. Yeah, why, why did Juvie sign back the cash money? After uh, the financial problems. And did you, you really sign back? I did. I okay. did. Okay. But after we all the financial out. problems y'all had back in the day. We worked it out. We worked it out, that man. That means they and cut the check. They cut the check. That's why Wayne couldn't get paid. All the money was the Jew. All the money was the Jew. Now, coming out of the projects in New Orleans, did you ever think you would sell five million records, man? Hell, man, coming out of the projects, I didn't think I was going to sell new records. Period. You know? mm -hmm. I stayed, and I was I lived in the project, but I stayed a right right across the street from the music store. Mm -hmm. So whatever star came to the minority spot, I seen them. What is your opinion about the releases of Death Row music by the company Wide Awake? They were so terrible that they got the catalog, but they did, they were worse than the actual Death Row. They, they didn't pay any bills, so all those tapes in the vault, all they would let them take or have you ready is mp3s and so here it go so then what they did they took the mp3s which are inferior quality and they didn't have a mastered or anything they just put them out Yo, what up? It's your boy Chris with the Ignorance is Free. Like always, thank you guys for your continued support. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to the channel. Now, let's talk Lil Wayne and Birdman. So, TMZ reported today that Birdman is pretty much saying, look, nigga, it's not me. I'm not the one holding up this fucking album. The album I'm talking about, of course, is the Carter Five. So, Birdman is saying, look, Lil Wayne has yet to hand in the masters. As soon as he does that shit, the album's out. The album's gone. You can go and buy the shit. Now, Wayne is basically saying, the fuck are you talking about? I am not giving you the masters for my album. You owe me 51 million fucking dollars. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> It's your boy Kodak back from Papano Beach, Florida, and I am the 2016 XSL freshman. I'm better than Tupac and Biggie. Say that again.
Barely and Tupac and Biggie. Say that again. Barely and Tupac and Biggie. Say that again. Barely and Tupac and Biggie. These niggas are still fucking talking. You niggas still breathing. You fucking roaches. Are you familiar with uh, BMF? I heard of BMF. Black Mafia family. I've uh, I've uh, hung out with these guys before. They they flew me out, and uh, you know I got to see them in their heyday. Mm. And you know, became became cool with a couple of the members. And you know, I was at Big Meech's house. You know, at one point, Blue Da Vinci was one of the rappers. We became cool. We've done interviews and everything. They're gonna. I mean, the government has too much resource. You know, they're paying informants. Mm -hmm. they, they can pay. Uh, Danilo Blandon got one hundred eighty thousand dollars for setting us up. It's not really a lot of money. It's not, but. What if if it's a normal kid who's not Danilo Blandon? You tell him, okay, you find me a drug dealer, and I'm gonna give you hundred eighty thousand dollars. A lot of people will do it. Yeah. You know they got informants that make five million dollars from 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 being an informant. Wow. You don't know about the top informants of the country? I studied all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they got five million dollars. He's not even the top guy. This is a black informant. Did you talk to PDD after converting? How can you encourage other artists to become Muslim? Inshallah. <clears throat> First of all, for my Somali brothers and sisters, P. Diddy is not Somali. <laughs> Although, you know. <laughs> <laughs> as far as the second question is concerned, why do Muslims pray five times and we Christians we pray less? Why do Muslims pray five times and we Christians we pray less? The reason is we Muslims, Salah is a sort of programming towards righteousness. See, normally people they say pray. Pray is not the right translation of Salah. Pray means to ask for help. In Oxford Dictionary, pray means beseech. In Salah, we don't merely ask for help. Besides asking for help, we are getting guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing I, I, that was big this week, which I think speaks to financial literacy, obviously, yeah. is uh, you had the Little Louisiana, Louisiana concert with uh, Lil yeah. Wayne. But yeah. today, Jay Prince actually said that he's going to get involved in uh, Lil Wayne and Birdman's contract dispute. Yeah. Um, you know, any thoughts around that? And, 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 you know, if you could have offer anything to this conversation uh, on the positive side, what would that be? Well, you know, when you talk about Lil J, you know, that's a big homie. And uh, there's always much respect and love for him. And, you know, maybe this thing need to go to somebody that could kind of, like, let them know like, man, what is y'all fighting over, dog? You know, y'all did this together. You know, I feel like, you know, y'all should just figure it out. And uh, you got to put better friends around you, too. Because you look at Donald Trump. Donald Trump said in a speech a long time ago, he said, you know, I was $500 million in a hole. And I picked up the phone and I called one guy. I had 500 million in my bank account the next day. Who can we call? Say I need $5, 500, 5,000, 500,000. For Complex News, I'm Hanuman Welch. As of September 9th, Bobby Shmurda has accepted a plea deal in his conspiracy case in New York that will land him in prison for seven years. Shmurda has been behind bars for nearly two years while litigation moved forward, stemming from his arrest in 2014. Shmurda, whose real name is Akil Pollard, pled guilty to one count of conspiracy and one count of criminal possession of a weapon in a plea deal that will land him in prison for seven years. Shmurda will receive credit for time served, leaving him with five years remaining on his sentence. 
Hey, what's up guys? Geo back again with a new video. Today we're going to be talking about how Kodak Black is actually a secret Illuminati clone. You may be wondering to yourself, wow, Gio, why are you throwing these allegations around? How do you know for sure? Well, recently I just finished watching the freshman interview and he gives off so many hints and his friends around him expose him too. So let's get right into it. This might be the most flexing class that y'all done had. Yeah, y'all talking all that freestyle stuff, man. We just flexing. For real. You already yeah, know how we coming. And we the youngest class. Yeah, you already know how we coming. We the youngest class. Every time. I just got out of high school. I ain't go to high school. <laughs> Shit, I went to... I was I, in juvenile. I went to four high schools. I feel like one reason why we all got picked, because we all in our own lane. All got something completely different going yeah. on. And everybody be wanting to be in niggas' lanes. Yeah. I ain't gonna don't. say everybody wanna be us, but man, everybody, everybody wanna, wanna be, be us. Yeah, nigga I ain't say it, he said it. Everybody wanna be in a lane and and they know they know you ain't nothing but a clone. Clone ass nigga. And they know they know you ain't nothing but a clone. Clone ass nigga. Hold up, hold up, hold up, pause. 21 Savage and Lil Uzi expose him. They put him on full blast. They say he's a clone. Look how he looks. You know he's a clone. He's not even trying to hide it. He feels all bad for himself. Exposed. Hold up. Let's let's keep on playing this. Yeah, I, I make positivity music. The opposite of 21. <laughs> yeah, I make murder music. And it, yeah. Killer nigga music. Yeah. Like, I got my own shit. Sniper game. That's me. I'm the boss of that. I own that. Trademark. Copyright. You know I got my own shit. Sniper game, that's me. I'm the boss of that. I own that trademark copyright. You know and one day we just got into an argument. <laughs> and I just, she called me and she said, Kevin, I think I'm in love with you. Wow. Yeah. Aww. And what did you say? I'm on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> so that was the first time y'all had sex after that? No, no. it wasn't after that. Oh, so y'all was friends I, having sex. I still had to wait. Yeah. I still had to wait. <laughs> it was like months. But I, months. I would <laughs> tell her about all the situations that I would have. I would tell her about my girlfriends mm -hmm. and, man, yeah. I wanted her to come kick it with me, but she want to go to the club and... You know, me and her used to have conversations like this, just sit in the car, talk. You know, the first time she ever smoked weed was with me. Yeah. You know, we just always been cool. Mm -hmm. Just like 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 two homeboys or something. So just it is cool. possible to fall in love with your best friend. Probably mm -hmm. the best Hell thing that yeah. could happen. I ain't it know is. she was I fine so. like that till I went to her volleyball game. Like, she ain't never wore no <laughs> she never wore any revealing clothing. Mm -hmm. Like she never wore anything to show her shape or show her figure. But when I went to that volleyball game and seen <laughs> so her in that tight <laughs> and I seen that but, her number was number five. <laughs> the same number I'm born February the fifth, but her number on the on the basketball number five, I knew it was meant to be. Oh. Look at all that ass back there, man. It's back there. <laughs> What's your reaction to Kaepernick's protests? Um, yeah, go, going right back again to this man. man. So the man and his decisions, man. Respect the man and his decision. That's all I can do. I have no, no opinion on it because the things that's, I mean, I have, I, I don't, I'm not into it enough to even give an opinion. So when he did it, I I really didn't even know what somebody had to tell me why he was doing it. That's how much I didn't know what was going on. And I kinda still don't. So they have to somebody had to explain to me, like, are you kneeling because of the Black Lives Matter thing and because of and all that, that wave or whatever, that whole wave just went by me too fast for me even try to even give an opinion. So I just was like, Oh, okay. That's what's happening. So you're a deep thinker in these issues. Mm -hmm. So step back from all of it. I know this is a very broad question, but, but where are we in the United States of America in race relations and what, what you see from day to day in your life? Skip, they wouldn't want to ask me that. They wouldn't want my answer to represent it because God knows I have been nothing but blessed. My whole path, my these thirty-three years have been nothing but a yeah. blessing. I have, I have never, and I'm, never is a strong word. I've never dealt with racism, and I'm glad I didn't have to. And I don't know if it's because of my blessings. I don't know if it's, but it's, it, it is my reality. This song right here is dedicated to the president of the United States of America. Yeah, y'all might know him as George Bush, but where I'm from, 
Lost City of New Orleans. We call him this. Georgia. <laughs> That's right. Georgia. Bush. I did something dedicated to the one with the suit. Thick white skin and his eyes bright blue. So call beef with you know who. Fuck it, he just let him kill all our troops. Look at all the bullshit we've been through. Had a nigga sitting on top of their roofs. Hurricane Katrina, we should have called it Hurricane. Georgia. Bush. Then they telling y'all lies on the news. The white people smiling like everything cool. So if you haven't heard, the internet is in an uproar. A lot of folks are really upset about Lil Wayne's so-called disrespecting dark-skinned black women. And I have been sent several emails from people wanting to know my opinion on the situation. And um, basically, it all, stems, it all stems from a letter that um, some video models had sent to Nicole Bitchy's website. I'm going to post the letter up so y'all can read this foolish letter for yourselves. I'm going to come back and tell y'all how I feel. Okay, so you guys just got a chance to check out the letter. And um, part of me feels like, you know, it could be real and it could be fake. Lil Wayne took to Twitter today to let everybody know that supposedly he didn't say it. Him and Mac Main were trying to do some damage control. And they're like, you know, everybody's pretty. Um, we didn't say that. This, this, and that. I don't believe shit that they say. Um, because one, even if the letter is not real, even if these groupies made it up just to get attention or just to stir up controversy, at the end of the day, Lil Wayne's lyrics speak for themselves. The first thing you notice in this video is Lil Wayne's shirt, which says, Jesus saves, I spin, which also turns the cross into a dollar sign. The saying, Jesus saves, I spin, is a mockery towards Jesus Christ. But Lil Wayne uses it as a cover up to fool Christians into believing that he is a Christian. God bless America. Uh, this old God bless America. Lil Wayne used to be against the government and was a blood gang member, but now he affiliates with the Illuminati to protect himself. Used to say the police, now I say jail. In Lil Wayne's mirror, he drops the bandana representing bloods. Uh. I've been in Cali the whole time, 14 consecutive years. Yeah, California has really been my biggest secret um, because I was trying to pull together. Once I started stand up, I was trying to get it all together and I started out doing white comedy and I didn't do any black rooms. I started off with um, Jeff Foxworthy and Richard Jenny and a guy named Dan Whitney who later became um, uh, Larry the Cable Guy. And, um, Really? I only had five minutes, and they took me everywhere and trained me and showed me things. And um, then I moved to Sacramento to make sure I had it. And then I went to Oakland to make, because I had never done black audiences. And I went to Oakland to figure out can I can I reach a black audience the way I'm doing? Well, how did you, how did you get in with them to, 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 to create this comedy thing? You know, that's what I'm saying. How did that take place? Okay, so the first time I did it, it was just an accident. <coughs> I was um I was in a place called Ruskin, Florida, and I met this girl, and her family had this um flower empire where they raised all the roses that people be selling and so they sold it in the city on the corners and I was like well how much are they making a day and she was like well not that much like they make like two hundred and eighty dollars a day and I was like two hundred and eighty dollars a day selling flowers oh no if you make it three hundred I can make six so <laughs> They gave me some corners. All right, so now I'm at a young age and I'm out there and I got cash in my pocket. So it's almost like I'm a street dude because I got the street dude's money and I don't have no curfew. So I must be grown. I'm short, but I got a mustache and I'm not short because <laughs> I ain't grown. So anyway, I go out with my friends. We go into a club. I'm thinking it's a little hole in the wall club. I'm not going to have no problem. I've been to clubs before. We get to the line. They ID and everybody. 
Then I see people go past me and they go to the door and they go, I'm a comedian, and they let them in. So I went to the door, I said, I'm a comedian, they let me in. I'm thinking when I get in, I can melt in the crowd. When I get in there, wow. it's a little hole in the wall and they tell me, you number five. <laughs> and I say, what do that mean? They say, you number five, you got five minutes. You'll see four people go up, you're number five, you got five minutes. He should be celebrating the release of his album and the success of his single, I See. He's had to defend his life last week and now he has to defend his freedom. He's not going to say anything, okay? He's a murder suspect and uh, I'm his lawyer and I'm not going to let him say anything. Basically what happened, uh, to make a long story real short, he visited a young lady, uh, went over to her place. Um, she was there, he was there. At one point she opened up a door. Five guys come running in. Are y'all seriously sending five people in the house to try to kill this man? One of them had green tape. Um, one of them had a weapon. One of them had brass knuckles and hit him with brass knuckles. Uh, then hit him real hard, had him wrapped up. Another guy had a weapon, hit one of the other guys with um, a weapon. Uh, it became a situation where he defended himself. Uh, somebody yelled, one of the other five guys yelled, shoot him, something to that effect. He grabbed a gun that was nearby and he started, he opened fire to defend himself. Uh, it was just him and a girl in there and the five guys came in there to hurt him. So basically, he defended himself. My name is Lord Born Justice of Law. I'm a member of the Nation of Gods and Earths, otherwise known as the Five Percenters. Peace. Basically, we're poor righteous teachers and we strive to civilize people that don't have no knowledge of themselves. If a person is living a life of wickedness or doing evil, it's our duty as civilized people, as five percenters, to strive to educate them, to put them on the proper path. We use the science of supreme mathematics. We use the science of our alphabets our, in our lessons. We have a lesson called a student enrollment, and in that student enrollment, it asks us, who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, the father of civilization and God of the universe. When they say God of the universe, God only mean man. And man means his, his universe, he's the sole provider for his universe. If you have a family, then you're the God of your, of your universe. The original people, history dictates and show and prove that the father of civilization is in the root of Africa. What's up, Wheezy fans? We present this news with a very heavy heart. First, it was Chris Brown who said he would retire from music after his album X, and now Lil Wayne has confirmed the news that he will retire after five years. Yes, we're not joking, Lil Wayne also is planning retirement. When asked about his retirement, Lil Wayne said, Oh, I know I'll be able to retire at 35 because I'm so ready to retire now. Whatever they want to be, whatever they want to do, I don't want to have no influence on, hey, you must do this, hey, you must do that. Because I didn't have that. I grew up to be exactly what I wanted to be and how I wanted to be. So, Toya, first and foremost, we are incredibly sorry for your loss. Wow. First thing we have to ask is how is your family doing? How's everybody doing? It's been very tough, um, you know, very emotional roller coaster. My mom, you know, she's struggling because she was really, really close to her boys. And mm -hmm. it's just a sad and unfortunate situation. You know, I don't wish that on any mother to have to bury two kids mm -hmm. at one time. So, you know, we just taking it one day at a time. Can you walk us through that tragic night? Um, I remember being in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, I had a host and a book in that day. And I remember telling my manager, I don't want to go to Baton Rouge because there's so much going on down there. And um, I don't know, something just said, go Toya, just go. So I went, I hopped on a plane last minute and I went and as I was on my way to the club, um, I received a call from my sister-in-law and she was like, um, did you talk to your mom? And I was like, no, why, what's going on? And she said, your brother, she said brother at the time, was shot. And I'm like, my brother was shot, like who? And she was like, Rudy, I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. And so um, I walked in a club and I was trying to call, some, you know, kept trying to dial numbers, yeah. like who can I call? So I called my mom, she didn't answer. I called her back, she didn't answer. So then I got a call from my mom and she was just 
screaming and just, I couldn't understand anything she was saying. So Star, uh, he had an interview with me recently and, and he feels that hip hop is not a culture, that it is a, it's a genre. And the reason is, is because it has no parameters, guidelines, or visible counsel. Does hip hop have parameters? Hip hop, could, hip -hop as a music could take you anywhere from space to political to silliness. So hip hop could go anywhere it wants to go as a music. As a culture, there's definitely different laws and regulations dealing with it as a whole cultural movement throughout the world. Most people deal with the, the five bases, the B-boys, the B-girls, the DJs, the MCs, the aerosol writers, and that fifth element, the knowledge culture overstanding. Anything else after that is just plus elements. Uh, describe this fifth element. Fifth element is knowledge. It was, it's really the first element because without knowledge, you, will never, you won't be able to know how to do all that b-boy breaking, dancing. Without knowledge, you will know how to, to do your MCs and holding your breath to a certain style of ways where you could keep rapping on. Without knowledge, you will, you will not know how to uh, um, DJ and, and spin on cue and all that. So knowledge is really the first element. But since we came out with the DJ, b-boys, MCs, aerosol writers and stuff like that, then we just say we plead the fifth. The fifth is the knowledge. Some people consider uh, producing one of the elements. Would you agree? If you want to add that as a, 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 a fifth, I mean, a, a plus element, but it's not, it's not definitely could producing, anybody could produce, so that's not part of the element of hip hop culture. You know, that's, that producing been going on way before we even started something called hip hop. Now, you know, as, as someone who's seen the development from the beginning, and you've traveled around the world, like the last time me and you saw each other was in Belgium. So, so I know that you're in every country. You know, how do you feel about Iggy Azalea and how she made an impact in the U.S. as an Australian rapper? Australia's been making impacts in the country for a long time. Let's go back look at the Bee Gees. So talk about that. So I don't want anyone to think I don't help my sisters. I mean, I. But what I'm saying, I don't want to start. I don't want to be a new artist. Why would you not want to start? Oh, <laughs> 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 